Hey guys, welcome back here. Another look at that little uh, prototype signal tracer. So let's get started here constructing one. I'll uh, just go through some of the basic steps that I uh, took to uh, construct this and you can follow along in the schematic. Here's the uh, circuit board itself. Uh, nothing more than a 4 by 6 centimeter um, prototype circuit board. Double sided. Worked out really well. We'll start out with the probe itself. For the uh, probe, I used uh, two different sizes of brass tube. You can see here I've got the uh, 3 16 by uh, 0 0.014 brass tube, and uh, this houses the uh, germanium uh, diode that was used, the uh, 1N34A. And the uh, second part of the probe itself is a, a 3 by 32 times 0 0.014 stock. So let's uh, get that soldered on the uh, circuit board. The dimensions I ended up using here for this piece of uh, brass, that outer side that was the 3 16 inch, was 2 and a half inches long. So let me go ahead and get the tubing cutters out and just uh, go ahead and cut that first piece there. And uh, there we have it. Again, this being the uh, 3 16 outer diameter cut to uh, 2 and a half inches in length. Take just a moment here and take some alcohol and uh, just clean the uh, circuit board off here and where I'll be soldering. I'm going to go ahead and take some sandpaper here and rough up the uh, brass itself so I make sure that I get a nice uh, solder connection here. You can probably see now I've got that uh, roughed up nicely there on that edge and uh, only a small part of it of course will be mounted to the uh, circuit board as such. Let me uh, clean this now with a little alcohol as well. You can see I took time here to identify and mark the center of the uh, prototype circuit board and this is where we'll mount that first brass tube that again being that 3 16 inch and be mounted as such. Let me go ahead and uh, just lay down a little bit of solder here in this area and then we'll come back and heat this up and get this attached. Probably have to heat this back up as well just to uh, get the alignment the way I want it. All right, you can see here I just did the best I could to get that centered up and uh, soldered on there. And uh, there you have it. So uh, this will be the uh, first part of the assembly. And uh, let's move along now to uh, getting some of the uh, components on here. And we'll save the uh, remaining part of the uh, probe construction for uh, later on. Again, you guys can follow along in the uh, schematic there that I'm providing as well, but um, I'm actually uh, using a .001 microfarad cap here, rated at 630. That could be increased to uh, 1 kV or 2 kV, depending on what your particular needs are. But this will uh, work well with me, and my positioning itself will be uh, six locations over, and we'll start uh, here from the top rail and come down. You can see here from the uh, underneath side of the board, this particular lead of the capacitor will attach itself back to the diode itself, which will be mounted inside this uh, first section of brass tube, which provides uh, the RF shielding uh, that we need. And of course, the other side here will go back to the uh, buffer amplifier itself. To uh, mount the uh, ICs, you can see I'm just using an 8-pin uh, dip socket. You could pick those up uh, online. I elected to uh, use the uh, dip sockets in uh, lieu of soldering directly to the uh, board itself here for the uh, prototype builds. There's no connection here to uh, pin number one, so I'm going to just lay a, a little bit of solder there on the back side of the circuit board just to uh, secure the uh, the dip socket here. You can see here I've got the uh, capacitor just tacked in along with that uh, dip socket itself. I'm going to go ahead and make the uh, connections now as uh, notated on the schematic itself. For my resistors uh, R1 through R3 here for the uh, buffer amplifier I'm using uh, 10 meg. I did find through some uh, breadboarding that uh, anywhere from uh, really 2 meg all the way up to 10 meg, as uh, long as they were all equal value, uh, I really couldn't tell any difference in the performance of the signal tracer, but uh, I'll go ahead and stick here with the uh, 10 meg since I have those out. You may want to play around with it if you build it though, just to uh, check your uh, input impedance and uh, see if it really uh, matters for you. My testing indicated uh, very little, if any, uh, change at all with the uh, various values. 
Okay, real simple there. You can see I've got the uh, resistors in there, R1 through R3, and they're as close to the uh, integrated circuit there, uh, that being the uh, 741 op amp as possible. So uh, let me go ahead and get this other uh, cap here uh, placed in so we can form the uh, ground connection routing as well. All right, here's a look at uh, what I've got mounted so far. You can see there the uh, components and um, pretty straightforward. And the uh, backside routing here be easy to uh, create a uh, circuit board for this design. This is the uh, ground location coming back up here. So this will be my uh, ground rail which will attach back here as well. And uh, being this is a, a prototype, I'm just using some of the uh, leftover uh, component leads here to do the tie-ins. Here I uh, bought a bag of these little small miniature uh, slide switches, single pole, double throw, and I uh, didn't know what I was going to really need when I uh, started the uh, prototype build, but uh, they seem to serve uh, well for this cause. This will be the uh, gain switch here that will tie back to uh, pin number two through a, a resistor as noted on the schematic. Let me go ahead and get this uh, tacked in here. All right, you can see I've got resistor R4 mounted here and it uh, attaches itself here back to the uh, switch itself, which again is used as a uh, gain control. Now we'll mount the uh, little capacitor here as well. C4 that uh, ties uh, from one side of the resistor here to ground as uh, notated on the schematic. I did play around with a couple different values here to get the best, I think, uh, response out of the uh, signal tracer in uh, anywhere from a 3.3 to a 4.7 microfarad cap worked best for me. When I started getting up to around 10 or more, uh, it just, I don't know, created some distortion that I wasn't happy with. It does create more uh, base and more gain as you increase the uh, capacitance value. So uh, you may want to play around with that if you build one. There's the uh, back side and you can see the other lead here off of the uh, resistor here that I'll tie into the uh, cap and the other side will tie into this uh, ground rail right here. A little update here on where we're at. Again, this particular uh, blocking capacitor here. C3, it's, it's called out on the schematic, uh, 0 0.001 microfarad will uh, connect itself back here to the diode, which will reside inside the uh, brass tube here. And uh, you can see I've got uh, resistors uh, R1 through uh, R4 mounted, as well as the little uh, electrolytic capacitor. And again, I'd mentioned I decided to go ahead and go with a, a 4.7 uh, microfarad uh, electrolytic cap. Here's the uh, the back side. You can see there's not much to the circuit, and the layout is uh, much more preferred uh, on this particular design versus some of my uh, first uh, prototypes. Okay, the uh, buffer part of the amplifier itself is complete, unless the uh, tie-in itself or the uh, DC source, which I'll do um, when I mount the other uh, dip socket uh, here in this area and there will be another electrolytic capacitor that will sit between the uh, voltage uh, input for the uh, 741 op amp and the LM386 audio amplifier. Okay, here's that uh, 470 uh, microfarad uh, cap, the electrolytic that uh, resides in the uh, VCC or the voltage input. And uh, what I did when I laid out the uh, design here, you can see I have the orientation of the uh, 741 op amp and the uh, LM386 audio amplifier inverted. So the uh, pins line up here, pin number 7 here for the uh, voltage input and uh, pin number 6 over here on the LM386. So uh, placing that capacitor there keeps the leads as short as possible, and you can see I've got my uh, little bridge here with a little heat shrink here tying the, uh, the two together uh, with the electrolytic, and of course we'll have a, a plus rail attached here to this side of the capacitor that will go back to uh, one side of a uh, on-off switch as well. Okay, moving right along here, you can see I've got the other uh, electrolytic cap. Um, I went with a, a 470 microfarad cap there just to simplify the design. I think uh, 250 is called out for a typical application off of the uh, LM386, but um, this keeps the uh, components the, uh, the same 
and uh, for ordering it uh, keeps things simple and then I've got the other uh, filter here applied in as well using a uh, 0 .047 microfarad in lieu of the 0 .05 that's called out on the schematic and the 10 ohm resistor that ties to ground here so uh, pins uh, number two, number four are tied to ground and I've just got those uh, looped in at this point in time and we'll tie in this ground rail that you can see here all the way down and uh, tie this in in just a moment. You can see I elected to use the screw down terminal blocks here for the uh, battery input itself and the uh, speaker location on this side. Let me go ahead and get this tied in over here to the negative lead of the electrolytic capacitor here which will be the plus lead for the uh, speaker itself. Okay here you can see the uh, ground rail that I was uh, alluding to earlier and uh, this will be my uh, positive tie-in here that goes back to the uh, switch itself and then I'll have another jumper here that comes off of this point and uh, just comes right back up here and then uh, we'll connect the battery here. You can see I finished uh, mounting the switch here and uh, this will be the on position, off position and uh, here's a look from uh, underneath and the uh, jumper here that I uh, ran itself back over to the switch. Let me uh, go ahead now and uh, get the other conductors out that we'll need that ties in to the uh, gain volume control and get those in place. Here's a look at that 10K dual potentiometer that I mentioned. As we uh, looked at the circuit earlier again this uh, axe is a uh, volume control and uh, controls the input level to the LM386 and also uh, gives me a variable resistor that allows uh, some operational gain for that uh, 741 op amp as I uh, noted earlier. Here's the uh, volume control and gain control wired up now with the uh, bottom section or the top section looking at it from here being the uh, gain side itself. I'll go ahead and grab my uh, VOM real quick and just make certain that my uh, DC resistance is uh, correct before I go to the trouble here of uh, tidying up these other leads and getting everything. Everything ohms out uh, just fine. So uh, let me go ahead and clean this up with uh, alcohol and uh, get it ready to uh, be soldered into the uh, circuit board here. By the way, you can see I'm using uh, just twisted pair, and I didn't really see any difference in the results versus using uh, shielded wire. Plus, the distance of these leads are so short, only a couple inches, so I'm not really certain if it would make uh, much of a difference or not. If you guys build one, you may want to play around with it uh, using a shielded audio cable like this, just like I used in some of my prototypes to see if you uh, see any performance differences. Okay, You can see I've got everything uh, tied in. A few of my other leads have been just a little bit too tight so I left just a little uh, extra in these, maybe about an inch or so. We'll see if that uh, impacts performance whatsoever. Anyway, let's move along to the uh, next step here. I've got the uh, resistor here mounted for the uh, LED that drives that starting with a 9 volt source LED minus 3 6 divided by, I'm going to run this at uh, 15 milliamps, 0 0.015. It comes out to 400 ohm. I'm putting a 390 ohm uh, resistor here. And uh, we'll have the leads come off here that uh, go over to the LED itself. Let's get that dressed up next. You can see I got the uh, LED dressed up there. All I did was uh, use the coil method on my uh, lead wiring and then uh, solder those on and a couple pieces of uh, heat shrink boot over each conductor then two pieces back over the uh, total bundle there. That cleaned up nice and I uh, just uh, soldered up my uh, 9 volt battery lead so uh, let's put a battery in here. I don't have the ICs in, just make sure that we get uh, a light here on the LED itself. We'll flip the switch here, and uh, there's the LED lighting, so that's a good sign. I'll flip everything back off, so uh, that at least indicates some uh, good between the switch and here. And uh, we'll do some uh, voltage measurements here before I put the uh, chips in 
and uh, just make sure I've got voltage there to the uh, correct pins and my uh, ground locations are spot on as well. All right, let's uh, move along now over to the uh, diode itself. Let's uh, get that placed in and then uh, we'll get the ICs in and uh, fire this thing up here and uh, see if it works. Here's that uh, inner probe, 332nd inch uh, diameter open tubing. So uh, let me go over here and just file the ends off and make sure they're nice and flush. Okay, you can see I've got uh, the tubing here cut and the orientation here, the diode itself, if that's showing up, it may not be. Um, you can see the uh, green line there on the end back this direction. But um, I will insert it this way and solder it. So uh, the negative lead here, or the negative side of the diode, will be facing toward the probe itself. So uh, let me get a, a bit of solder in here and uh, just set that down in there. And then we'll cover it up with some heat shrink. You see here just a little uh, dry fit here just to make sure everything goes in the way I want it. I'll do just a little bit of trimming, but uh, a couple more pieces of heat shrink there and I'll be set and ready to go. Okay, this may or may not be showing up, but you can see how I've got the uh, heat shrink here protruding through. Again, that diode itself resides up in this area, which will be uh, shielded. And uh, I'll tie this uh, ground bus here back into the outer shield here in just a moment as well. Let me get this uh, center connection here soldered back here to the uh, capacitor. Okay, all my uh, DC voltages were fine. I'm going to just go ahead and take time now and just clean the uh, circuit board really good with some alcohol. And uh, just get all the uh, remaining flux off and uh, just inspect it one time real close. And uh, make sure that we're good. I did check, again, as I just mentioned, the uh, voltages and uh, everything looks fine. So I think we're ready to uh, fire this up. I'll use a uh, test speaker. We'll get the uh, ICs in and uh, bring it up and uh, hook it up to this radio right here behind us and uh, see what happens. Okay, I just tied in a uh, temporary speaker here back over to my uh, terminal tie down. And I've got the radio playing here in the background. You can hear it. I'll turn the volume down. And uh, let me go ahead and hook up my uh, probe here. We we'll flip the power on here. The LED should come on. And that's a good sign. We got uh, we got audio. Okay guys, in all of my betas I added an additional 470 microfarad cap in the uh, DC side and uh, just because we're running the gain so high here at uh, just under 200 times on that op amp um, I found that adding an additional uh, capacitor there just kind of smooths things out and uh, clears things up. Here's the audio turned uh, wide open. I'm on my antenna input here on a local station. And uh, you can hear the uh, signal every so faintly. Now let me flip the gain switch over here. Oh my gosh, even though I'm such a good call. We'll be back next Tuesday with Whole House Radio Live with And there's the, uh, the gain switch turned on. And again, as I use the uh, t the uh, volume control here and the gain control, I'm actually varying the uh, DC resistance here and increasing the uh, gain at the same time that I'm increasing the uh, volume or allowing more of the uh, signal to come through to the LM386 chip. So they, uh, they're working in parallel with each other, which I think is a pretty cool design. Ordinarily, you wouldn't even pick up a signal this low. Let me uh, flip over to the uh, IF side here, and uh, you'll notice an increase in the amplitude.
themselves, which I know they will, but to do so responsibly. And I gotta say, that's something that the lion's share right now. Personal belief is. Let me go back over here to the uh, grid itself. I'll have to turn the volume up just a bit, of course. Responsibilities. Well, that was later Monday. I'm going to flip the gain switch again. Medishare members have shared more than one billion dollars of each other's medical bills. Best of all, you can save a lot of money with Medishare. The typical Okay, we'll kick the gain out. I'm going to turn the volume down just a bit more, and I'm going to swing over here to the uh, plate itself of the tube. Medishare anytime, so call them today and check it out. Here's the number to find out more, and there's no pressure. They're super easy to talk to. 855-BIBLE-11. That's 855-BIBLE. Anyway, I think that gives you a good indication. We got uh, lucky here, or fortunate, uh, on this build that it's uh, actually working without doing any uh, troubleshooting. I wasn't so fortunate on some of the, uh, you know, the uh, prototypes that I built. Uh, cold solder joints or uh, bad components. I think I had one bad chip, or maybe I damaged the, uh, the chip itself. Who knows? Anyway, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. In the uh, next installment, we'll uh, pick up and uh, get this thing mounted into the uh, little uh, vial that um, I purchased. And um, you guys can uh, look at that process. It's pretty straightforward, and we'll give it one more uh, test run. Thanks again for watching, folks.